Hi, it's DeWire, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. Always, 1776.com, a free site. It is Friday, December 17th, 2021. Bitcoin, as I make this video, is below $47,000 a coin. I picked up some more Bitcoin this morning. Now let's talk about some market opportunities Bitcoin has. In particular, I want to focus on Turkey, a place where the lira has disintegrated. It's dropped about 30% against the dollar. Right, just understand in 2005, it took you 1.344 lira to purchase a dollar. This year, it takes you 16.8553 lira to purchase a dollar. Such are the perils of fiat currency. Right? If you're paid in lira, understand you could get a raise and still be receiving less over time against the dollar. Now let's backtrack first and let's talk about demographics in general. I want people to understand the market opportunities. In my opinion, they're not discussed enough. Let's talk about the demographics of my viewership. Right, I receive uh, information from time to time about the ages of the people who follow my videos. I recognize that many of the people who follow my videos are between 24 and 36 years of age. Right, Many of you are younger. Let's talk about an opportunity your generation is going to have that in my opinion will allow you over time to surpass my generation. I'm in my 50s. Now just understand that there are many economies that are perfectly suited for cryptocurrency usage. I want people to understand the opportunity presented by the continent of Africa. Right here in the United States, we're bludgeoned in school, hearing about American slavery in the 19th century. Right, what they don't tell you is that globally, Africa is a demographic juggernaut. Right, understand you can focus on the past, you could focus on past injustice, or you can look at the present and the future and realize the economic opportunity. Realize that whatever happened in the past, the African continent is an essential market that cannot be ignored and that has tremendous buying power, as well as a very vibrant future. Understand that the African continent's population, let's talk about abundance, more than tripled in the second half of the 20th century. It went from 230 million people to more than 800 million people. Just understand today it has 1.3 billion people. More importantly, you understand that the internet for people of my generation was new. Too new for many to trust it. Right? Understand my girl's father, an engineer. I'm here in Northern California, Silicon Valley. An engineer refuses to put his financial information online. Right, people view the internet as the wild, wild west. The group that understands the potential of the internet as a focal point for commerce are younger people. Right, it's the people in my viewership, for example, 
who have found me online. Right? You understand the resources online. You understand the value of cloud computing. The efficiencies of remote meetings, of using the internet to provide goods and services while saving money. Right? Many of you, no doubt, shop online at Amazon, at Google, at other online vendors. Well, I want you to recognize that 60%, you heard me right, 60% of the African continent today is under the age of 25. If ever there was a market that is primed for cryptocurrency, it's the African continent today. Right? Whatever you've heard in the past, just understand, during my lifetime, Africa has exploded. Its presence on the world stage is profound. Let's talk about another country that has exploded. Right? These are the things they should be focusing on in school. Right? I can sit there and hear all about the 1840s. Or I could hear about the market opportunities right now in Africa. Let's name another such country. India. Would it shock you to know that India's population has more than doubled since 1975? Folks, India currently has 1.4 billion people. It will soon surpass China in population because of India's favorable demographics. What do I mean by that? I mean that 50 percent, half of India is under the age of 25. Right, so folks, you've had a revolution take place demographically again in school they could tell you about this war and that war and you know uh, British occupation and stuff like that just understand that today the winners in the demographic race are the African continent and India Understand, both countries have young, vibrant populations. When you add into the mix smartphones and tablets with internet usage and cryptocurrency, you're greatly increasing commerce. You're greatly increasing market efficiencies distribution, information exchange, means of payment. Now understand, neither the African continent in general, right? Understand there's some pockets in Africa where there are some problems, but neither the African continent in general or the country of India have the centralized authoritarian overhang of China. Right? Understand the Communist Party in China is an authoritarian outfit. Let's be blunt. There's talk of concentration camps being run in China where the occupants are Muslim. Right? Google that story. China of course felt threatened by cryptocurrency. How could they not? Market economies beat socialist economies over time. Right? That's history, folks. Look at the former USSR. Where is it today? Right? Look at Eastern Europe. How has that part of the world changed? 
You want price discovery in a free market. You don't want some group of politicians, whether they're well-meaning or not, arbitrarily picking prices and thinking that that's going to lead to economic sustainability. So China, which right now has more people than India, has problems. It's going to be surpassed by India because of the demographics. India is more robust because India, which has its own problems with too much market regulation, one man's opinion, take everything I say here as an opinion, you research it for yourself. Right? But India has much more price discovery. That gives India a distinct advantage, in my opinion, over China. Well, into this mix, let's throw a current situation. If you're someone who doubts the power of cryptocurrency, and I understand, we're in the early innings of cryptocurrency. It's nascent. It's new. It's historically unproven. Then what I want you to do is to pay close attention to what's happening in Turkey a country of more than 84 million people. Let me repeat that. Folks, Turkey has more than 84 million people. Understand, Turkey has more than doubled in size since 1975. Understand how big Turkey is. Would it shock you to learn that Istanbul has more than 14 and a half billion people. Again, more than 14 and a half billion people. Understand too, Turkish demographics skew young. The median age in Turkey is roughly 31 years old. Let me repeat that. The median age in Turkey is roughly 31 years old. More than 22% of the Turkish population is 14 years of age or younger. Now understand what happened in Turkey. Cryptocurrency got a foothold. It became a hotbed. What do I mean by that? At the start of 2021, you had Turkish crypto exchanges, let's name them, BTC Turk and Paraboo. They were trading more than $1 billion a day at the start of this year in cryptocurrency. Understand, BTC Turk had more than 1 million users trading on its platform. Folks, that was more than 1% of the entire country. Do the math. Having an account on one crypto exchange. A 2019 Statistica survey found that one in five Turks admitted to having exposure to cryptocurrency. One in five. So, of course, the crypto use was so robust as it was in China that, as in China, the Turkish Central Bank banned the use of cryptocurrencies to pay for goods and services in April of this year. Now, you know the way cryptocurrency works. It's almost like a black market. It's so much more efficient than a collapsing fiat currency, like the lira, right again, which is down 30% against the dollar, that all of us need to look at what happens next in Turkey. Something has got to change. Either the Turks pivot toward using another fiat currency, Right? The dollar, perhaps. Some fiat currency that's going to hold its value, at least short term. 
I don't think the dollar does long term, but short term. Right? So when you're getting paid, rather than get paid in a decreasing, depreciating local fiat currency, you're paid in a fiat currency where you're going to maintain value. You get paid a hundred dollars instead of some amount in lira. So you know the next day you still have a hundred dollars worth of purchasing power. Right? Turkey might go that route. I'm sure there are more dollar-based transactions in Turkey now than there were a few weeks ago when the lira still had much more value. But understand, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. When one crypto exchange in Turkey has a million Turks as customers, understand they know the power of cryptocurrency. They understand the ease of use. It might shock some people who have been hearing stories about slow transaction times involving Bitcoin, for example, to learn that there's something called the Lightning Network with near instantaneous transactions. Worse yet, you don't even need the Lightning Network to do near instantaneous transactions with Dash, Solana, and countless other newer cryptos. So I need for people to look closely at Turkey because, in my opinion, sooner or later, the market takes over. Turkey is a huge opportunity for crypto. I think the people in the crypto space understand that whatever the government says, whatever the government says, doing crypto transactions have certain advantages, such as protecting the purchasing power of your end of the bargain, such as allowing you to conduct commerce using your cell phone, right? such as being able to trust the prices around you and have continuity in those prices because many of the cryptos, right, Bitcoin, Dash for example, are limited supply. Whatever the government is doing, you know only 21 million Bitcoin will ever be created. And understand, it's very hard to convince young people to be inefficient, right? To use inefficient fiat currency. And of course, the demographics of Turkey skew young. So this is that rare situation where you have a collapsing fiat currency. You have a robust cryptocurrency community. You have demographics that skew young in a country with the kind of commerce that can create a city with more than 14 and a half million people. If you're a crypto skeptic, please watch what happens in Turkey in the coming months. If the government backtracks as so many have in loosening its ban on crypto, because understand, the government has an interest in avoiding social anarchy and having the economy completely collapse and having people unemployed out on the streets demanding more economic justice. Right? If the government learns, as they have in other countries, look at Venezuela, for example. If the government learns that the cryptocurrency economy is keeping the country together economically. 
then the powers that be in Turkey are going to back away from enforcing its cryptocurrency ban. Right? Ergodin, quite frankly, needs cryptocurrency. More than cryptocurrency needs him. Right? So let's pay attention to the pivots Turkey makes. Just to understand, with all of these countries, once the people lose faith in the local fiat currency, there is nothing the central bank can do. Right? Just understand, whether government wants to admit it or not, the power of any central bank is limited. So Turkey should be exhibit number one. Let's sit back and watch what happens in Turkey over the next six months. My prediction here on December 17th, 2021, is that cryptocurrency is going to take over that country. The adoption rates of cryptocurrency in Turkey are going to exceed the adoption rates in most of the world. Right? The Turkish economy is going to turn around and it's going to ultimately hit new highs because of the efficiencies, the protection of purchasing power, the ease of use, the limited supply of the cryptocurrencies that cryptocurrency brings to the table. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. And again, as I make this video, crypto is down today. Right? I like to come on and talk about crypto when crypto is down. That's the level of belief I have in its vibrancy, in its ability to rebound. Bitcoin under $50,000 a coin. I'll take it. You don't have to put a bow on the package. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. I'm telling you Africa in 20 years is going to be almost unrecognizable. The economic boom is going to be that big. That's how I see it. I hope you leave your comments. Thanks for stopping by.